In this video walkthrough, we show you how to install Windows 10 on your Mac using Bootcamp Assistant. Let's check it out. The first thing we need to do is to download the Windows 10 ISO, and this will allow you to install Windows 10 on your MacBook using Bootcamp Assistant. So just search on Google for Windows 10 download, and you should see download Windows 10 disk image ISO file right there. So you just click that, and that will take you to Microsoft's website where you can download the disk image. So the first thing you need to do is to select the version of Windows 10 you want. You want just normal Windows 10, click confirm, and then choose your language. So I'm gonna do so right here. I think I speak English somewhat well, at least maybe you don't agree, but we'll see. Let's click confirm here, and then you should see the 64-bit download. You wanna click there, and that will download the Windows 10 ISO and save it to your downloads folder. Now, prior to this video, I already downloaded the Windows 10 ISO and it's saved right there in my downloads folder, as you can see. So once your Windows 10 ISO download completes, you can proceed to the next step, and that is configuring the Boot Camp Assistant. Now, what you do is you open up the Finder, you go to Applications, and then you scroll down until you find Utilities. Once you open up Utilities, you should see the Boot Camp Assistant app, and you want to just open that up to get started. So once Boot Camp Assistant is open, you can click Continue, and then next to the ISO image box, you want to click where it says Choose, and go to the downloads folder or wherever your Windows 10 ISO is saved, select the ISO, and then click open. All right, so now we need to designate the amount of space you wanna give the Windows Boot Camp partition. Of course, you can drag it all the way over, but you wanna be reasonable because you wanna leave Mac OS with enough space as well. Now, a lot of this will depend on how large your drive is and how you plan on utilizing Windows. If you're gonna use Windows for gaming and you're gonna download a lot of games, you probably wanna give it a little bit more space. I'm giving it 100 gigabytes of space, and I think I can get by with that. So once you have it set, you just need to click on the install button in the bottom right hand corner to get started. And then after you click install, you're going to see downloading Windows support software and it's going to go through this whole spiel. Um, I've sped this up a little bit so that you're not waiting uh, for this to complete so that we can get through this walkthrough in a timely manner. It's still going to be pretty lengthy, so I wanted to make sure that I got through these parts as fast as possible. Now it's going to ask you for your password, so you just put in your password here. Which I'll do, I think I typed it in wrong. Let's try it again. All right, and then click OK. And then it's going to reboot your Mac and you're gonna boot into Windows Setup to install Windows 10. All right, so here's the Windows logo. Again, I've sped some of this up throughout this entire tutorial. The first thing you're gonna see, it's gonna ask you to choose your language and other location-based information. Once you have that filled out, just click Next. And now it's gonna ask you for your product key. If you don't have a product key, you don't have to worry about entering it right now. I do have a product key, but I'm not gonna enter it because I think most Mac users probably won't have a Windows 10 product key. So I'm gonna do how you guys are gonna do and just click, I don't have a product key. So now you can select Windows 10 Home or Windows 10 Pro. Uh, if you plan on registering Windows and actually paying for it, the $99 is going to get you Windows 10 Home, and I do recommend that. If you want to go Pro, you have to pay $199, and most of the Pro features you probably aren't going to be utilizing, I wouldn't guess, but it's going to be up to you. I do have a Pro license already, um, so I will choose Pro, but you can choose Home if you want to just pay the $99 if you decide to activate Windows and make it legit. So click Next and then click I agree, and then click next, and then the installation process is going to complete. It's copying all the files over and getting everything set up. This takes much longer than I showed you here, but I wanted to speed things up to get through this as soon as possible. So it's going to reboot, and you're going to see it getting everything ready, and then you'll see this, this page right here. Now it may be tempting to click use express settings, but I don't recommend doing that. I recommend clicking customize. That way you can turn off all the little personalization features if you wish to do so. You can read through all of those and decide whether or not you agree or not, but I like to turn them all off just like this. Click next, turn everything off, and then click next. And then it's gonna ask you to set up an account. Now, you definitely have to give it a username so I'm just gonna type in Jeff, but you don't have to give it a password, although I do recommend you do so, but for this tutorial, since I wanna make it as seamless as possible, I'm not gonna use a password. Uh, I do recommend you do so though, so just click next once you've done that. 
And now you can enable or disable Cortana. I'm gonna select not now because I don't want any sort of assistant. And it is continuing to load. This does take a while. I have obviously sped it up a little bit. And there we go. So we're at the Windows desktop. Now you see the bootcamp installer. So you wanna click next there. This is what's gonna allow you to install all the necessary drivers to work with your Mac. So in this case, I have the MacBook Pro, I click next, and it's gonna make everything work like the touch bar, etc. So just agree to that and then click next and it'll install bootcamp. And then click install on any other pop-up that you see. These are the drivers that you're gonna to need to work with your hardware. So you just let that run all the way through. And then you'll see this, finish. So just click finish, it's going to reboot. And since I didn't set a password, it'll go ahead and log me in automatically like that. And now that all the drivers are installed, here's the good news. We can now use our Wi-Fi connection because the Wi-Fi drivers are installed. So let's go ahead and connect to Wi-Fi now. In the little system tray, you just click on your Wi-Fi router, put in your password, and then press return on your keyboard. And it looks like it's connected. Okay, so now we can go to the start menu and run the Apple software update. So click start, click Apple software update, and this will install any of the additional updates that it needs to download from the internet. So it is checking for new updates. And there we go. So we see a Bluetooth update and we also see an Apple software update for Windows 10. So you definitely want both of those installed. So that's what we're doing right now. Any pop-ups, just like before, click install. And then yes, we wanna reboot. Just make sure everything was checked and we are installed, good, yes we are. So click yes, and it is restarting. And we're back up. So now, we need to run Windows Update. And this can be a little time consuming. So you wanna to go to your settings in the start menu and then you should see update and security. I'm gonna click where it says Windows Update and it's gonna check for updates. It found the updates and now it's downloading those updates. And this is gonna take a while. I'm not gonna even lie to you. This is gonna take a while. So in the meantime, let's talk about activation. So you can activate Windows or join the Windows Insider program. Activation, you're gonna see my, my device here is already activated because I activated it before and it actually keeps that hardware on file so it automatically will activate when you reinstall Windows, which is kind of cool. Uh, but if you're not activated, you can put in your product key, you can purchase a product key from the Windows Store, $99 for Windows Home, $199 for Windows Pro. Uh, if you don't activate, you can still use Windows, but you'll just have a little ugly watermark in the bottom right hand corner and you can't really personalize your device to the degree that you can if it is activated. Otherwise, you can use the Windows Insider program, which is like a beta test uh, to run Windows with all the latest updates, bleeding edge updates. and. Microsoft will actually give you uh, product keys, activation keys for free. It'll basically re-up your activation key if you agree to join their Windows Insider program. So you're running bleeding edge software and you're also agreeing to send statistics to Microsoft, but that's the sort of the trade-off that you have to make if you wanna use Windows for free and have it activated. So the point is the choice is yours. I do recommend activating it if you use Windows a lot. So now you need to restart once the Windows update is completed, and then it'll go through and finish off the remaining updates that it needs to do, as you can see there. All right, so now we're back up, and that's it folks, we're good. Windows 10 installed on our Mac using Bootcamp Assistant on Mac OS. So now, how do you reboot into Mac OS if you wanna go back? Well, you just click the little system tray there, and then click where it says Bootcamp, and then click Restart in Mac OS, it's that simple. So that will reboot you, take you back to your Mac OS installation and you can use your Mac like normal, right? Uh, but what if you wanna go back into Windows? Well, you can go to system preferences, you can click startup disk, you can authenticate with your password like this and then click unlock. And then you could select bootcamp Windows instead of Mac 
Macintosh HD or whatever your startup disk is called, and then click restart once you have bootcamp Windows selected, and that will automatically boot you into Windows. Now, another option and one that I really like is to reboot your computer while holding the option key on your keyboard like this. So you just wanna restart, hold the option key, and by doing this, you get the opportunity to select which system you wanna boot into. So you can choose Mac OS or you can choose to boot into Windows. So you'll see this little pop-up here appear as you hold the option key, just like that. So you have Windows there, you have Macintosh on the left, and you can just choose which one you wanna boot into. I'll boot into Windows, just like that. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you guys think down below in the comments section. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac. Be sure to check out some of our other videos, and if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. Thanks.